Well, hello, everybody. My name is Jody Gaver. I'm a technical solutions professional with Microsoft, and I'm here today to talk about modern management. And this is going to be a quick session. There's going to be a series of these that I'm going to do. Today, we're going to talk about provisioning instead of imaging. If you've ever thought of uh, why, you know, why should I get off Windows 7 and go to Windows 10? This is one of the biggest reasons in itself. Because when you're buying new devices now, they come with Windows 10 already on them. So why put Windows 10 on there again when it already exists? With provisioning packages, you can just change the bits that are already there to make it what you want and provision devices in minutes instead of hours, potentially. So provisioning, how do we provision something? Well, we have to create a provisioning package. And there's a couple ways you can do that. First is the Windows Configuration Designer tool, which is located as an app in our app store. You can go and I recommend getting this app because the other option is the Windows 10 ADK, which most of you are familiar with. But if you go with the ADK method, you have to download, install it, remember to update it, whereas the app will always stay updated for you. So if you don't have the app, go ahead and get it. I have already installed it. So this is what the configuration designer looks like. Now, there's a couple different options here. Today, we're going to just cover provision dev desktop devices. So when you do this, it creates a new project name for you, and I recommend putting it somewhere where, you, where you'll remember where it is. Now, when this launches the first time, this is going to go through kind of a nice wizard. It gives you the option to name the device. I'm just going to do something like pilot dash percent serial today. There's a couple different options for naming, but to keep this simple, I'm just going to utilize pilot. It'll hyphenate and add the serial number in. You can enter, enter a product key if you need to. You can configure the device for shared use. So if you configure this for shared use, uh, put a couple policies and settings in place that will do things like automatically clean up profiles for you and, and, and other great features that we can talk about in another session. This remove pre-installed software is also a nice feature if you're getting your devices and they come with some of that bloatware on them, um, whether it's HP, Lenovo, Dell, sometimes they come with software on there. This will remove that for you, but know that this adds about an additional 20 minutes to the provisioning process. So only check this option if you truly know that that software is on there. So adding a network, this is the Wi-Fi network it's going to use to provision the device. And um, my husband works in IT, and he so nicely made me a easy-to-remember network. I'm going to go on to account management. You have multiple options here. You can enroll this in your local Active Directory. You can enroll it in Azure AD. Note if you do this, um, you have to have Azure AD for one. And when you click this Get Bulk Token, it will ask you to sign in, which actually gets that bulk enrollment token for you from Azure AD. And if you do this method, you have to recreate this package every 30 days because that token's only good for that long. You can create a local administrator account and you can just do a local admin. So if you're a small enough school or business that you only have local accounts, you can do that. So for today, I'm just going to do something simple like create a tech account. Moving on to the next step, notice I have nice green check marks. If you leave anything in a state where it's not happy, I will show you what that looks like. So here's the other cool thing about using this configuration designer is you can sideload in applications. So if you have things like, say, the Teams app, VLC, uh, Firefox, Google Chrome, Office, you can sideload in these applications. So I'll just add in Teams right now. And if any of you have been using SCCM or, or other provisioning tools, you know that usually you have to find the silent install command line. This so nicely pulls it in for you. So I will name that Teams. This continue installations after failure. This is like SCCM in the task sequence. If one, one app fails and you want it to continue on, if you need to force a restart afterwards, and if there's any required dependencies. So I will add in that app. You can add in multiple. I'm going to browse out 
And let's grab something like Firefox. And I'm going to point out right here, when I was browsing out, notice you have executables, MSIs, Apex, Apex bundles, VBS, Reg, Bat, and PowerShell scripts. You can run just about anything in here. So I'm going to cancel out of that, and I'm not going to name it. See, when I try to move on, it tells me that there's something wrong with this step. I'm going to cancel out of that for now. You can add in certificates and then you can finish. So this gives you a quick summary and will allow you to create this package. Now this is a very simple wizard. For some of you that are like, oh, there's just not enough settings in here. You can switch over to the advanced editor. But once you do this, note that you can't go back. There are a lot of settings in here. When you watch me add in a Wi-Fi profile, you can come in here and see when it's in bold that it's actually been added as a configuration item. You can add multiple Wi-Fi profiles in here. For me, I usually add in um, my cell phone as a hotspot because I travel a lot and have to demo this stuff. So under provisioning commands, this is where we added in the app. So you can come in here and see the command line if you need to edit that. You can also add in multiple applications in here. I talked about the ability for changing the bits. We can do addition upgrades for Windows 10 if they're coming with like Pro on it and you want to go to education. You can do that by just adding a license key in there. You can come in here and share, do the shared PC mode, which has a lot of cool settings. We will go in more in depth another day, and that's an also a great case for our Set Up School PCs app, which will be another session. So you can do a lot of different things in here. Remember, this is just initial provisioning. So this is how you want the device kind of to be like right away. Now, normally you would image with SCCM, you'd have like a golden image and, and you'd have it customized in a certain way. And then you would use like your policies to finish configuring. In this instance, you can either provision it and still use group policies to continue um, editing settings and, and whatnot. Or you can use Intune or Intune for Education to push things, uh, settings and applications down from the cloud. So think of this as how you want the device to be right out of the box. So if this is a student PC, you're probably going to want to come in here and lock a lot of more things down. But that's also where we get into using the Setup School PCs app, which does a lot of that for you. So after you've configured everything the way you want it, you can save the project and then export it. And this will actually build the provisioning package for you. You can sign and encrypt the package. Some people are worried about security, so you can actually um, sign it and you can also lock it down with a password. All right, so that's going to build the provisioning package. Now, once that's done, it tells you where it outputted it to. And you can see it created some files in here. All you need is the provisioning package in the security catalog. And then you just copy this into the root of any thumb drive. It doesn't have to be formatted. I just happen to have a formatted thumb drive handy. Well, hey, that was quick. I love the pause button. Okay, so now I have those two provisioning files located on this USB drive. Okay, so now we're actually going to provision a device. I have my little USB drive here, and I have a low-cost device at the out-of-box experience screen. So I'm just going to insert this USB drive, and at this state, it's automatically looking for that provisioning package on a USB drive. So it's automatically going to go through and do everything we just told it to. Okay, so we are still provisioning, as you can see. The cool thing what this does is it is actually making a copy of this provisioning package and all the files on it locally on the machine. So shortly you'll see it say you can actually take the drive right out. And if you think of this as when you're doing a, um, 
uh, you know, a normal Windows install and you have to name the computer and it needs a reboot. And then you have to join Active Directory and it needs a reboot. So this is doing all those steps for you and doing the reboots in that process. All right, so this is after the reboot and you see all the different steps it's applied. It's now running the scripts, which is the part where it's installing the applications that we told it to. All right, so we're back. We already provisioned a device. I know you couldn't see it, but uh, when I had the clock running, that was just under two minutes to provision this device. So now let's log on and see what's there. Well, hey, look at this. We have a Windows 10 1803 provision device. That was very, very quick. So wait a minute. We created a little bitty, itty bitty provisioning package. It's literally a couple hundred megs. And we were able to provision a device wirelessly. I didn't have to plug it into switches and have the octopus laid out. Yes, I plugged in a little USB 3 drive. You only have to leave the drive in for maybe, maybe two minutes, and then you can pull it out and move on to the next device. So on this device, we have all of our nice built-in Windows 10 software, including Chrome and Teams that we pushed down in our provisioning package. Pretty cool, huh? So we were able to provision a device. That's cool. That's from the out-of-box state. But what if I want to re-image a machine or re-provision? What if I have Windows 7 on it and I want to get Windows 10 on there? Or I just want to blow it away because I feel better about it. Well, you can do that very easily by creating some bootable media. I use Rufus. Um, seems to work really good across all the different um, variations of machines out there. I just simply put in the USB drive, choose the MBR partition scheme for BIOS or UEFI, FAT32, you could name the volume and just do a quick format. After you format that drive, then you're going to just extract the contents of your Windows 10 ISO into the root of this drive. So after you have your Windows 10 ISO in there, then we're going to add this auto unattend file to handle all those normal prompts for formatting the computer, clicking the next, next, next stuff. Um, I'm all about automation and I think you are too. That's why you're listening to this. So after you copy that auto unattend file into the root, now let's take it a step further and remember the provisioning package that we created earlier? Well, now we can simply copy that into the root of this drive. And now this media, when you boot to it, will format, install Windows. And then because that provisioning package is on there, it will automatically do everything we did earlier, whether it's enrolling it in, into your local Active Directory, the work group, or enrolling it into Azure AD if you're there. So with one little USB 3 drive, which are very, very inexpensive now, and um, a couple minutes per computer, you can provision a ton of devices very quickly wirelessly now. Yes, I said wirelessly, no more wires, no, no more octopus switches laying around. And um, I know all of you probably either have kids or no kids. And if it's summer imaging, bring them in, give them these USB 3 drives, have them unbox and just provision a bunch of devices very quickly and easily. We'll save you a ton of headache and money, no infrastructure to maintain. It's a beautiful thing. Now, for some of you who are a little bit bigger, you're still either gonna use group policies to continue to customize these devices or in tune and intune for education, which we will have a whole other conversation about. Thank you for listening and I hope this was helpful.